In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural rocky planet material in Blender. And this rocky planet material has a few different uses because you can use it for some kind of Mars or alien type planet, but you could also use it as kind of an alien or Martian surface. So I'll show you how to add this landscape in Blender using a Blender add-on. And you can see if I add the material onto it, you can get this really cool Martian landscape material. And this material also also looks really good as a rock material so if you're wanting to create some sort of Martian rock it works really well as you can see on this rock object that I've added now if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel and purchase the tutorial files then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my patreon page and that is a really great way to help support this YouTube channel and then real quick before we start this video was brought to you by my blender procedural material packs so if you like using procedural materials in your artwork then definitely consider are checking out these procedural material packs. So I create packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. And purchasing the material packs is also a really great way to help support this YouTube channel. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials yourself, then you can check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. All the links are in the description. So before we start with the procedural material, I just wanted to show you the setup that I have in the 3D space. So for this object, I just pressed Shift A and I just went right here and added an icosphere and then right behind me on the add icosphere settings I just subdivided this and then I shaded the object smooth now to get this landscape object I used the landscape add-on in blender so if you want to enable it you can just go edit and then open up the preferences and then on the add-ons tab right over here on the search you can start to type in land and I just turned on the add mesh ant landscape add-on and that is how I added the landscape object and then also while we're here in the user preferences I'm also going to be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial um, so you can just type in node right here on the search and then just check mark the node wrangler add-on and then also if you'd like to create a rock object to put the material on then right here on the add-ons again you can search for extra and you can turn on the add mesh extra objects and this will allow you to add rocks into blender and then you can just close the user preferences so now if you press shift a you can go to mesh and you can go right down here and you can see that there is the landscape add-on and then right behind me if you open up those settings um, there are a bunch of different settings that you can play around with to get the look of the landscape that you want so you can turn these subdivisions up right here if you want it to be more subdivided and be more detailed so I turn this up to like a 200 and then you can also change the mesh size so I'm gonna turn both of these up to like a 5 and that way it's a lot bigger so that's basically what I did to get this object right here and then to create the rock object you can press shift a and go to mesh and because we added in that other add-on the add mesh extra objects you can see that there is a rock generator right here. So Blender actually has a rock generator. Now I do have a more detailed video on how to use this add-on. If you'd like to check that out, I'll throw the card right up there on the screen and the link in the video description. And so I just used that add-on to create this rock object. And then for the lighting, I just added a sunlight and just pointed it at the sphere. So now let's get started with the procedural material. So I'm just going to click on new here and I'm just going to name this Rocky Planet. All right, so to start off, I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's just drop the noise texture right down here. And then because we turned on the Node Wrangler add on, you can press Control T with the noise texture selected and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. But then I don't need the mapping, so I'll click on it and I'm going to press X to delete it and then I can just plug the object up to the vector so that we're using the object coordinates and then also using the other feature from the node wrangler I can hold down the control and shift key and I can click on nodes and that is going to preview the node so I'm going to start off by creating the main surface color so I'll take the scale here and I'm going to change that to 20 and then I'll turn the detail all the way up to 16 so it's very detailed and then I'll also turn the roughness up to a 0.6 so it has more roughness and then I I can take the factor and I can plug that into the base color and then I can control shift and click on the principle to preview it. Now this doesn't really look like a rocky planet so I want to change the colors in between here to make it look more like a rocky planet. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a color ramp node and let's drop the color ramp node right in between here and then we can change the colors in here in the color ramp and that's going to change the color of the rocky planet. So I'm going to click on the white tab and I'm going to drag the white tab over here and then I'm going to click on the color down here and I'll I'll make it a darker color and then I'll make it a bit red and I'll make it even darker and if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using the hex value for this color is 64 
2f26. So you can just put that number into the hex value and then that'll get you the same exact color that I'm using. And then I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to click right about here to add another tab. And then this one, I'm gonna make it even darker, but I don't want it to be fully black. I just want it to be pretty dark, so something like that. Now this entire procedural node setup does get a little bit big by the end, and so I want to be able to organize my nodes, and that way it won't be as confusing. So I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a frame. So I'm going to drop the frame down here, and then I can click and drag, and I can drop nodes into the frame. And this way you can click on the frame, and you can drag it around, and it's a nice way to organize the nodes. And then if you click on the frame, you can press N, and N is going to open up the side panel right here, and then you can name the frame. So I'm going to actually name this to main surface. And then you can press N to close the side panel. And you can see now this frame has a label, and so that's really great for organizing our nodes. So I'm actually going to take this frame and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and drop it down here. And then I can press N again to open up the side panel. And this one I'm going to call mountains. And then I'll press N to close the panel because I want to create some mountains and then add the mountains into the final material. So to create the mountains, I'll press Shift A and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. And let's drop the Voronoi texture right in here into the frame of the mountains. And then I can take the object and I can plug that up to the vector. And then to preview it, I'm going to control shift and click on it to preview that. So then on this Voronoi texture, I'm going to change this right down here to this one. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it starts with an M. It's right down here at the bottom. Now I want to use another texture in here to distort this texture. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture. And let's drop the noise texture right in here between the object and the vector. And then I can drag over and drop it into the mountains frame. And then this is really important. Make sure that the color is going into the vector of the Voronoi texture. So I'm going to change the scale to two, and then I'll turn the detail all the way up to the max, which is 15. And if you zoom in here, you can see that this is starting to look kind of like mountain ranges on some kind of alien planet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a math node and I'm going to drop the math node right here and then I can drag it into the mountain frame. And then I'm going to click on the add and I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to change this to the hyperbolic tangent. And then right over here on the scale, I want to change this scale to one. And now the color there is much more subtle and that is what I want. So now I want to add the mountains into the normal to give it some bump, but I also want to add it into the color. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm I'm going to search for a mix RGB. Let's just drop the mix RGB right here and then I can put it into the main surface. And then I'm going to take the value here from the math node and I'm going to put that into the factor. And then I'm actually going to take this color and put it into color two. And then I can control shift and click on it so you can see what we're doing. And so now because we've added this into the factor, now this color is going to be those mountains. So you can change this color and it's going to change those mountain tops. So I want to make it kind of a tan color, kind of a peachy tan color. And the hex value that I'm using for this color is a hex value of F F B five A four. So now you can see those mountains are just peeking out of the color. Now I also want the mountains to contribute to the bump. So I'm going to take the value and I'm going to plug that into the normal, but then I need to convert this to normal data because if I control shift and click on it, you can see those shading issues. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node and we're going to drop the bump node right in here between the value of the math node and the normal. And this way it's going to convert this black and white data to normal data. So we need to plug the value up to the height and then the normal can go into the normal. And now you can see what that's doing and that's looking much more cool. Now it's a bit too strong. So I'm going to change the strength down to a 0.4. So it's much less strong. And then I also want to invert it. So I'm going to hit, hit the invert button. Now it looks like those mountainy areas are kind of popping out. So now I just want to give this entire object a little bit of noise, kind of some bump all over the place. So I'm going to take this bump and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I'll just drop it down here. And then I want the normal to be going into the normal. So now we have this height value that we can add data into. So I'm going to take this color and I'm going to plug it into the height. And then um, I don't want it to be inverted, so I'm going to turn off the invert. And then it's way too strong right now, so I'm going to turn the strength value down to a 0.15, and that looks much better. Now you can also see that this planet does look kind of shiny, and that doesn't look very realistic, especially if this is like a large scale planet and those are like giant mountains. So on the roughness value here, I'm going to turn this roughness to a 0.7, and that way it is much more rough and that does look more realistic. All right, so now I want to create some small craters and add those onto the material. So I'm going to select the mountain frame 
name and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it down here. And then if I open up the side panel with N, I can go right here to the node tab and I can just rename this and I'm gonna name this small craters. So to create the small craters, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna start with a Voronoi texture and I'll just drop it in here. And then I can plug the object again up to the vector. And then I can control shift and click on the Voronoi texture to preview it. So I'm gonna change the scale up to 250 and that way we have a bunch of small little craters. But I want to make it more contrasty because it's not very contrasty. So I'll press Shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp. And then let's just drop the color ramp right in here and then bring it into the small craters. And you can just control Shift and click on the color ramp. So I can now drag these two tabs closer to each other and that's going to make it more contrasty. So I wanna bring this one over here and this one kind of over there, just like that. Now, I don't want the small craters to be all over the place. I just want them to be in a few patchy areas here and there. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna add a noise texture. Let's just drop the noise texture right in here into the small craters and put it down here. And then again, I wanna bring this down and I wanna plug the object into the vector. And then let's control Shift and click on the noise texture to preview it. So I'll turn the detail level all the way up to 15 and then I'll turn the roughness up to a 0.6. So I'm going to use this noise texture as a mask just to tell it where the craters are actually going to be. But this is not going to work very well as a mask because it's not very contrasty. So I'm going to take the color ramp and I'll press shift D to duplicate, drop it down here. And I can then plug the factor up to the factor on the color ramp. And then I can control shift and click to preview the color ramp. And then I want to make this very contrasty. So I'm going to drag these two values pretty close to each other. Um, and I'll bring them out kind of right here. So this is now going to work much better for a mask. So I can now press shift A and I'm going to search for a mix RGB to combine these together. So I'm going to put the mix right in here in the small craters. And I'm also just going to bring some of these out a little bit. So we have a little bit more space. All right, just like that. So I want to plug this bottom color ramp up to color two. And then I want to plug the top color ramp up to color one and then I don't want this to be set to mix so I'm gonna change it to lighten so right here just change that to lighten so now if you zoom in here you can see that where the noise texture is white um, you're not able to see the craters as well now I don't want to be able to see the craters at, at all so I'm gonna take the factor value and turn that all the way up to one and that way now you can just see the small craters in some areas here and there so I now just want to add this to the normal. So I'm gonna take this bump and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, drop it down here. And then I can take this color and I can plug that into the height value of our new bump. And let's just control Shift and click on the bump to preview it. And I'm just gonna bring it up here and I need to move this out of the way so I have a little bit more space. And then I need to plug this bump into the other bumps. So I'm gonna take the normal and plug that into the normal on this bump. And then this color is going into the height. So now if I control shift and click on the final material, I can just zoom in here and you can see there's some little craters. Now, right now they're popping out and I don't want that. Um, and that is because the invert was turned on. So I'm going to turn the invert off and now the craters look like they're going back in. And then I'm also going to change the strength down to like a 0.25 and that way it's a bit less strong. And then just make sure to press control S to save your project as you're working on it. All right, so now I wanna create some more land detail. So I'm gonna click on the frame right here and I'll press shift D to duplicate it, drop it down here. And then again, you can press N to open up the side panel. And I wanna change this to land detail, land detail. All right, and then I'll close that. So to create the land detail, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for the magic texture and I'll just drop the magic texture down here. And then I can control shift and click on it to preview it. Now I want to turn the depth all the way up to 10 because that one works best. And then I'll turn the scale to like a 2.8. Now I want to distort this magic texture. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a noise texture and we're going to use the noise texture to distort the magic texture. So I'm going to drag it into the land detail and then I'll plug the color up to the vector. And then also again right here, I want to plug the object from the texture coordinate. I want to plug the object up to the vector on the noise texture. And then on the noise texture, I'm going to turn it the scale to six and then I'll turn the detail all the way up to 15 and then I'll turn the roughness value also up to a 0.6 just so that it has a bit more roughness now I want to be able to control this much better um, and I also want to make it black and white so I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna search for a color ramp now let's drop the color ramp right down here and I can plug it into the land detail and just control shift and click on the color ramp so I'm now going to drag these two tabs very close to each other to make it much more contrasty so I'll just drag them to somewhere right about here. 
And then I want to plug this into the bump as well. So I'm going to take this bump and I'll press shift D to duplicate and I'll drop it right down here. So I just want the normal to be going through the normal. And then again, the normal to go through the normal through these bumps. So we now have this height value that we can plug more data into. So I'm going to take the color and I'm going to put that into the height. And then if you control shift and click on it, you can see what it's doing. And then I want to turn the strength up a little bit. So I'm going to turn the strength up to a 0.3. All right. So back up here, let's control shift and click on the final material again, just to see how that's looking. So if I select the bump node and press M, that is going to mute it. And you can see there's a lot less detail now, but then if I select the bump node again and press M to turn it back on, you can see that's what it's doing. So it's adding a lot more detail all around the material. All right, and then there's just one more group of nodes that we're gonna be creating. We're gonna be creating some large craters. So what I can do is I can actually just use the small craters to create the large craters. So I'm going to press B for the box select, and I'm gonna box select all of these nodes and also shift and select the small crater frame. So now that I have all of these selected, I'll press Shift D to duplicate, and then I'm gonna drop it down here. And then again, I wanna plug the object up to the vector. So if this is kind of far away, you can kind of drag the texture coordinate down here and then just plug the object up to the vector on both of these nodes. And then I'll just put this right back up here. And then I can control shift and click on this light to preview it. And then also if you select the small craters frame, I'm going to press N to open up this panel here. And I don't want this to be small craters. I want to change this to large craters. And then I'll press N to close that. So now we just need to change the values. So on the scale here on this Voronoi texture, I'm going to change the scale to like a 30. And then for the noise texture, I want to turn the scale up to like a 20. So if you zoom in here, you can see that those craters still are a little bit small. And also the noise is kind of distorting them a little bit, um, but I want to change that. So I'm going to take the white tab and just kind of drag it over a little bit to make those craters a little bit more contrasty. And then I also want to drag the black tab out um, on the noise texture color ramp. And if I drag this out kind of more towards this side, you can see that it's making the craters a little bit more subtle. And then instead of just mixing these together with the mixer, RGB, I actually want to take this color, this bottom one with the noise texture, and I want to plug this into the factor. So we're going to use it as the factor. And then this color two right here, this color is going to be fully white. So basically what this noise texture is doing now is it's adding a bunch of noise kind of along the craters and that will just make it look more organic and more natural. Because if I control shift and click on the Voronoi, you can see it's perfectly smooth and perfectly round. But then if I control shift and click on the light in here with the noise texture, now it's just adding a bunch of noise all over those craters. So I now want to plug the large craters into the final material as well. So way up here, I'm going to take this bump node and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to drop it right down here here in between the bump and the principled BSDF. And then just make sure the normal is going into the normal. So then way down here on the large craters, I can drag this and put a wire all the way up here. And I want to plug that into the height right here. You can also drag this a bit closer if it's a bit too far away and just plug the color into the height. All right, so the color is going to into the height and then the normal can go through the normal and then the bump node can go into the normal on the principle. Now let's control shift and click on the final material and just kind of zoom in here. So you can see that the large craters are kind of hard to see. So I'm going to turn the strength value up to a 0.4 and that way now you can see them and they're much stronger. And there is the final render. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching. And again, if you'd like to purchase the finished procedural material and also help to support this channel, then you can do that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the video description. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material packs. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can check out my procedural material playlist on YouTube. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.